my seat. We are going to have uh, a lesson prepared for you uh, with uh, Brother and Deacon uh, Amath uh, dealing with works in regards to what exactly that means in regards of salvation. So uh, without further ado, uh, Brother and Deacon Amath. Shabbat shalom, everyone. Shabbat shalom. <clears throat> How is, <clears throat> how's everyone doing? Good. All right, praise the most high. Everyone had a great, a great week? All right. <laughs> I know it's a long week. Yeah. With our um, daily lives, all we're doing is working, working. <clears throat> and... I come to realize that the work we do every, on a daily basis to pay our bills and to keep a roof over our head and to keep food in our belly, everything we're doing is to build Babylon. But why not start working more for the Most High to build our kingdom, which is coming? We don't need Babylon. <laughs> okay, it's falling. We need to more so focus on our obligations. And yeah, we need to survive. That's, that's cool. But... I think as, as strict as we are with our, our regular work, let's use that strictness towards mo the Most High's work because we are his servants. And the more we focus on that, the closer we will realize how, we are, how much we are closer to our kingdom. So I'm going to touch on laboring and how laboring prepares us for the coming of Christ. All right, I'm going to start in Deuteronomy chapter 10. And say con when you're there. All right, hold on, let me, let me get there too. Yeah. Oh, so no, as a matter of fact, I'm going to use that one. Okay, Deuteronomy chapter 10, start at verse 12. Everyone's there? <coughs> this is the All book right. of Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 12. 10, 12. Verse 12. Verse 12. Chapter 10, verse 12. And now, Israel, why doeth the Most High thy power require thee, but to fear the Most High thy power, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Most High thy power, with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Hold that. It says, and now Israel. So the Most High is making a statement to us. And he, and he, he says what? Read. And now Israel, what doth the Most High thy power require of thee? He asks, what does the Most High thy power require of thee? Um, Brother Shamal, get me that word on um, require. This is the Hebrew word for require, uh, H7592, and the word is sha'al. It means to inquire. To inquire. To request. Right. To demand. To what? To demand. So this is the most high put in Israel in an, in an authoritative calling. He says, what do I demand of you, Israel? Read. But to fear the most high thy power. To walk in all his ways. So you to fear the most high thy power and to do what? To walk all in all his ways. To walk in all his ways. Read. And, and to love him. And to love him. And to serve the most high thy power with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Right. To Hold that. Okay. So this is, this is the most high telling us what he requires or he demands us. So he said, okay, Israel, this is what you do. This is what I am expected of you, Israel. Read. To keep the commandments of the Most High thy power. To do what? To keep the commandments of the Most High thy power. Read. And the statutes which I command thee this day for thy good. And he asked a question. So he said, Israel, what do I require of you but to do this, to do that? He's showing that, and everything that's mentioned is nothing difficult. Christ said, my yoke is, is easy. Take my burden. It's easy. It's light. So the Most High is not really asking much of us, right? He, he, he appointed us to do this. Very easy work. Read. Behold, 
The heaven and the heaven of the heavens is the most high is thy power. The earth also, with all that therein is. Only the most high hath the delight in thy fathers to love them, and he chose their seed after them, even you above all people, as it is, is this day. Circumcised therefore thy oh, Hold on. Read verse 15 again. Only the most high thy power have a delight in thy fathers. It says the most high had a delight in our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Read. To love them. To, to love them, right? And he chose their seed after them. And he said he chose his seed, their seed after them. That's us. Get me that word chose. So understanding that the most high calls Israel authoritatively, he gives us some type of a, a, a sense of um, authority. <clears throat> Give me that word chose. This is the Hebrew word for chose, Hebrew 977, and the word is bcha, and it means to try, to right. select, acceptable. To a, select. A point. A, to, a what? A point. A point. What does that word a point mean? Anybody? <laughs> right? What else? Somebody said a sign. Right. He assigned Israel a position. He's letting us know what we have to do as his chosen people. Read. As he chose their seeds after them. So he appointed Israel. Read. Even you above all people. Even what? Even you above all people. So now that's showing the Most High how much he exalted his people. I mean, showing us how the Most High exalted us. He appointed us above all people. So what does that, what that leaves us with? That it's our job to show the nations how to do it. To show him, to show the nations how to serve the Most High. Re right? Read. As it is this day. As it is this day. That's not just during Moses' time. That's till today. But where do we go wrong? We started to follow those who we were supposed to be teaching. God. Right? That's why we fell. We began to follow our, 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 our students. We were supposed to be in position to teach them. And now what we did, we followed their ways. That's where we fell. Read. Verse 16. Circumcise therefore thy foreskin of your heart. It says, read that again. Circumcise therefore the foreskin of your heart. Read. read. And be no more stiff-necked. Be no more stiff-necked. It says, circumcise therefore the foreskin of your heart. The previous verse, verse 12, it said, um, Love him and to serve the Most High thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. So why did I go there? Because an uncircumcised heart cannot be subject to the Most High's word. That's why he says circumcise it. And even though he promised that he will circumcise our heart, the reason why he mentions it is to put us to, to let us acknowledge that we do need our hearts to be circumcised, to remove the wickedness and the filth that we've dealt with. So, so we cannot be subject to the Most High's law unless we first circumcise our hearts. So that means when it comes to this work, this work starts with us looking at ourselves first before we decide to teach anybody else because we messed up. Mm -hmm. We had the law. The Most High gave us the law, his statutes, his commandments, and we messed up. So this work, it begins with us judging ourselves. If we judge ourselves, we won't be judged. Self-examination. So what we need to do is look at ourselves first, take out the moat from our eye so that we can remove the beam from our brothers. So, and what I like to do personally, I like to... Um, I, I, like, I always do um, self-examination. I think I beat myself up too much. I'm always looking at what I did wrong and how I can do, do it better. So I'm always writing down all my wrongs hmm. so that I, I'm taking inventory of where I messed up at and how I can improve myself. Because why would I be, why would I claim I'm a child of the Most High and I'm supposed to be an example to the nations, but yet I'm messing up, right? Read. And be no more stiff-necked. And be no more stiff-necked. For the Most High, your power is power of all the gods and the lords of lords, a great power, a mighty and terrible, which regardeth not persons, nor taketh reward. He doeth ex execute hold, the judgment. Wait, wait, hold that. Read that again. For the Most High, <laughs> your power is power of gods 
and Lord of Lords, a great power, a mighty and terrible, which regardeth not person, and take of, nor take of reward. It says he's a great power, a mighty and a terrible, and regardeth not persons, nor take of reward. So it's our job to understand his might and to respect it. That's why it says fear the most high. So again, with this work, we have to understand our obligations. And it first starts off with our, ourselves. Exam like I said, examining ourselves and changing our ways before we begin to look at what other people are doing. Get me um, Jeremiah 7. So, so far, everyone understands, right? Khan, all right. Praise the most high. Uh, what I said, Jeremiah. Yeah, Jeremiah 7. <clears throat> uh, start from verse 21. And wait till everyone gets there. Everybody say Khan when you're there. All right. It's the book of Jeremiah, chapter 7, verse 21. Thus said the Most High of hosts, the power of Yasha'Allah, put your burnt offerings unto your sacrifices and eat flesh. For I spake unto your fathers, nor command them. Wait, read that from the top again, brother. Verse 22. For I spake unto your fathers. I spake not. I spake not unto your fathers, nor commanded them in the day that I brought them out of the land of Egypt, concerning burnt offerings or sacrifices. So what is the Most High saying in verse 22? He said, hmm? He said, For I spake not unto your fathers, nor commanded them in the day that I brought them out of the land of Egypt, concerning burnt offerings or sacrifices. What the Most High is saying is, when Moses came down from the mount with those two tablets, it did not have a list of sacrificing. It, it wasn't commanded that, that we had to sacrifice. So sacrificing was only because Adam fell. He messed up, and so did we. And what Israel didn't realize was that sacrificing itself was just an archetype or example of Christ, of what Christ would have done for us. We was just practicing what Christ would have did, um, was going to do when he came. And Christ came because Adam messed up, so we needed a new Adam. So... What sacrificing was supposed to do was to lead us to Christ in faith, to understand what we're doing with, the, with our sacrifices was what Christ would have done that would lead us to our kingdom, right? But we got caught up with it. And it came to a point where sacrificing was null and void because we was doing it just to show outward righteousness. We wasn't doing it with a conscience toward changing ourselves to the most, for the most high. That's why we continuously did it when we were not supposed to. It should have been a one-time sacrifice, and that's it. Israel obey, but we didn't do that. We sinned, and we went back another year to sacrifice, continued to sin again, and sacrifice. What was the point of it? So we needed Christ. Read. So that's why it says he didn't command us to sacrifice. But what did he command us? Read. But I brought them out of the land of Egypt concerning the burnt offerings or sacrifices. Verse Read. 23. But this thing I commanded them. Saying, this is what he commanded Israel. Read. Obey my voice. Obey my voice. And I will be your power. Read. And you shall be my people. And walk ye in all the ways that I have commanded you, that, in, that it may be well unto you. So this is what he commanded us. It starts off with Israel again. He gave us what he commanded, and we were supposed to take that and teach the nations of him so that all knees can bow before our God. So, matter of fact, read. But they hearkened not. But we did what? But they hearkened not. We didn't listen. Nor inclined their ear. Read. But walked in the counsel and in the imagination of their evil heart and went backwards and not forward. So we went backwards. We was doing things that we were not supposed to be doing. Read. Since the day that your fathers came forth out of the land of Egypt, until this day, I have even sent unto you all my servants and prophets. Daily, rising up early and sending them, yet they hearken not. So the Most High constantly send us the prophets and teachers to talk and say, listen, Israel, obey the Most High or be judged. And we didn't care. How many of us till this day, we see Israel and we operate in the same way? 
to the point where we worse than our fathers. Right? Read. Yet they hearken not unto me, nor incline their ear, but harden their neck. They did worse than their fathers. <laughs> we did what? They did worse than their fathers. We did worse than our fathers. Until this day, we are doing it. Any sin that is portrayed before us, we do it better than the Gentiles. Right? Right? I mean, for example, look at this homosexual thing. Ain't nobody more flamboyant homosexual than our people, which is sad. When we should have been like, listen, brother, you fix yourself up and be a man. Listen, sister, you be a woman. But now nah, we making it, we, we making it, we glorifying it. So our fathers, I'm pretty sure our fathers was not doing it that bad. <laughs> and it, it's, it's sad and it's just getting worse and worse. Read that again. Yet they hearken not unto me, nor incline their ear, but harden their neck. They did worse than their fathers. Therefore thou shalt speak all these words unto them, but they will not hearken to thee. Thou shalt also call them unto them, but they will not answer thee. But thou shalt, not, but thou shalt say unto them, This is the nation that obeyeth not the voice of the Most High their power, nor receiveth correction. Truth right. is perished, and is cut off from them their mouth. So this is the people who was given the law, and they wasn't even keeping their own truth. We were supposed to be teaching the others, the, the, those who are without. So what good is it if we have the law and we are not even operating it with ourselves? Who can we teach? Hmm. Get me Deuteronomy um, 32 and 21. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, verse 21. They have moved me to jealousy with which they have moved me to jealousy with that which is not the most high. So what we did, we moved the most high to jealousy with things that are not God. We began to look at stones and images which are dead and asking them for life. We wanted objects to heal us, which were things that couldn't even heal themselves. Stones and statues that could not pick themselves up, and we asked them to pick us up. This is what we did. We followed things that were not the most high instead of going to the Father who created us. Read. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities. So this, this made the most high upset with the people he put in a high position. Read. And I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. So he said, you know what I'm going to do, Israel? I'm going to pick a people to be over you. If you want, you want to follow them, all right, cool. Let them, now you're going to be serving them. They're going to be your masters. They're going to put you on slave ships. You're going you're gonna to continue following their gods. Read. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. He's going to do what? I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. He's going to provoke us to anger with a foolish nation. So now, what the Most High did, he, he picked fools to be over us. So now, when you have those, that nation, who was put in an author, authoritative position, begin to follow fools, who do you have to teach the earth? Right? You have the, the people who the Most High chose, following fools. If, the fool, if a fool follow a fool, they both will fall into a ditch. So now when you have Israel following fools, who, who are we going to teach? Because now we became foolish. Read that again. I will they have moved me to jealousy with that which is not of the Most High. They have promoted me to anger with their vanities. I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people, I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. So now what he did was to make us jealous. It reminds me of what Paul did when he mentioned, um, you find yourselves not worthy of the word, therefore we will move to the Gentiles. I think that's Acts chapter 13. 
It's exactly what the Most High did. And me personally, I think the Most High is talking about the Jewish people. Because what he did, he chose them to, to now claim our, our um, heritage. And when I think of this scripture where, he, where the, the Most High said, um, I will make, I'll move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. That jealousy part, I, I, I remember when my grandmother was complaining about the Jewish people. Like, oh, why they got all this money and we stressed. We, 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 you know, it remind, it remind, I took it to that scripture. Like, yo, listen, this is exactly what you're saying. Now you jealous over them is because our father's messed up. Right? So now we upset that they're in a higher position and we know they're not the people. Even when we was in the world, we knew something was up with them. I know I did. So I'm like, yo, why, who are these people? Why they, why they have all the money? And you know what? They, they, they in the line in the, welfare, in, in the welfare building, but yet they have all the money. I never understood that. What is that about? So I can personally say, okay, I was jealous over them. So what the Most High said, his word came, came true. Right? So now what are we to do next? Understanding that we Israel, we have an obligation. We have a we we are, we belong, we are at a high position that we have forgotten of, and we can't blame anybody else from this being taken from us but ourselves. That's why when we pray, we ask for forgiveness of ourselves and our fathers. We have to remember what they did because what they did led us to where we at now. But will we continue that and pass that to our children? That's what we should ask ourselves. Because it's, they're the future. They, are, they will copy whatever we're doing. The same way we copy what our parents did. In ignorance. So now that we fell, who's ruling? Right. Get me Job 9 and 24. Hold on, let me get there. All right, read. It's the book of Job, chapter 9, verse 24. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. Read that again. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. The earth was given to the hand of the wicked. They did not obtain it by themselves. They got it because those who were, the, who were supposed to be ruling fell. So the Most High said, you know what? Here. He gave the world to the wicked. Read. He covered the faces of the judges thereof. And what the wicked did? He, Read co that. he covered the faces of the judges thereof. So those who were supposed to be the judges of this earth, their faces are covered. They have no idea that they should be the ones ruling. It's to the point where we got so complacent to being slaves that we forgot that we was once mighty, that we were supposed to be, we the, we the ones who are supposed to be ruling. Read that again. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covered the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where? And who is he? So if, we read that part. If we not, at? where and who is he? Now my days. Hold on. It says the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covereth the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? What is he asking here? Who are those that should be judging? Right. What else? I'm sorry? Where are they? Where, where are those that should be judging? Where are they? Lost. So now it's time for those that should be ruling to stand up and, and start working. We're not going to gain this kingdom by, sit, by, by sitting out on our hands. We got we to gotta earn it now, especially with all the mess we did. 
it, it's time for us to do what we have to do to earn it. It's not going to just be handed to us. Right? Get me um, Matthew. Matthew 25. No. Wait, hold up. Everyone understands so far, right? Cons. All right, praise the most high. Um, give me Matthew 25 and 14. Con? This is the book of Matthew, chapter 25, verse 14. For the kingdom of heaven is a man traveling into a far country who has called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And to one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one. Hold on. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country. That's Christ when he ascended back into the heavens. Read it again. For the kingdom of heaven is a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. So he called his servants. He called and whoever listened took heed. Those who were paying attention took heed. That's all of you who are here today. So you took heed to the calling. You heard the voice and you understood who it was. That's why you're here. That's why you grasp on the truth the way you did, no matter what walk of life you was in. I know for me, it, it, it came to me like, okay, I saw the slaves, I was like, all right, cool, I'm in. It, for all of us, it, it was different. I mean, because I was big on, um, um, back in school, I was doing, doing African um, history. And so when I seen that brother show me the slaves, I was like, wow, so we Israel? Cool. But at that point, I didn't understand Christ until I came back again. And I was shown, all right, cool, this is what I have to do. All right, follow Christ, boom. For all of us, it was different the way we came in. But nonetheless, we all heard that calling. We all listened. We all understood our shepherd's voice. And we took heed and we followed him. And we, and we all should continue to follow him no matter what our end is, whether it be our death or when Christ come back. We don't know. But he said, endure until the end. Whatever that end would be for you, follow and endure. That means persevere. We'll read that from the top again, verse 14. The book of Matthew, chapter 25, verse 14. For the kingdom of heaven is a man traveling into a far country who, who called his own servants and delivered unto them his, own, his goods. So he called his servants. We listened, and what he did, he delivered us his goods. What's that? Number one, that's the gospel. So we, we, we was given the understanding of what we need to do to make it into the kingdom. Read. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. So he said, it says, um, and unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one. Those talents are, are, are those gifts we were given. No matter how great or small your gift is, you still have something you can bring to the body. You still have something you can put on the table to help build your kingdom. So he gave, he gave one five, he gave another two, and to another he gave one. Um, that shows, listen, it don't matter, I mean, the most high... Uh, and Christ gave us what we are able to do. So never underestimate the gift that was given to you. Read, but this is what happened. Then he that received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. So what this one did, he took what, he, what was given him and he, and he put it to use. He traded and he got, and he got back. What did he receive? He received fruits. So he took what was given him, and he doubled it. Mm. Read. Then he that received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. 
and likewise he that received the two also gained other two. So the one who was given two talents, he did the same thing. Even though his, his gifts was least than the other brother, as it may seem, he still used what he was given and he, and he made it profitable. He did something with what was given him. But what happened to this last one? Read. But he that received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. So now this servant, he took his one talent and he, and he did nothing with it. He put it to waste. He sat on his hands. So what this shows us is, um, number one, we all have a gift. It's up to you to find out what that gift is. Find, ask the most high. And don't dig it under the ground. Put it to use. And what led this one servant to waste his talent was his lack of faith. And that's something that we all kind of deal with. We start to question ourselves, okay, am I good enough? What can, what can I do? You know what? You're greater than, than how you think. The Most High sees you as important. So he gave you an ability, and he told you, okay, put it to use. Number one, you got the truth. What are you going to do with it? Are you going to dig, dig what you know under the ground and not make any use of it? Or are you going to let your light shine before those who need it? And understand, this is not for, you, for, for your benefit. You're doing this for the most high. Read. Then he there was, as you were. Verse 19. And a long time the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoned with them. Verse 20. And so he that received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained besides them five talents more. Verse 21. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. So he, so he showed Christ, all right, look, I came back. You gave me this as much as it, as little as it was. I did what I can do with it. And this is what I, I brought back for you, Yeshaya. So Yeshaya said, all right, cool. Sit with me in my kingdom. You'll be ruler over much. Read. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. He also that received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold. I have gained two, ta uh, two other talents besides them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Even thou into the joy, enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Read. Verse 24. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art an, ha an hard man. Hold up. Now here he comes to that, that one servant who wasted his talent that didn't put in any work that he was obligated to be putting in this is what happened with him read lord i knew that thou art an hard man reaping where thou hast not sown and gathering where thou hast not starred so not only did this servant waste his talent he knew the consequences of it he knew christ's characteristic he knew his obligation yet he still lacked faith, and wasted what was given to him. Read. Verse 25. And I was afraid, and went and hid thy talent in the earth. He was what? I was afraid. He was afraid. And went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast that is thine. His Lord answered and said unto them, Thou wicked and slothful servant. What did he call this servant? Thou wicked and slothful servant. He said, you wicked and you're lazy. Read. Thou knowest that I reap where I sow not, and gather where I have not straw. Verse 27. He said, you, you know I left you work. You know I left you a job to do. Read. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have <laughs> received my own with usury. Take therefore thy talent from him, and give it unto him, which have ten talents. So look. 
what I understand with this with, with this scripture and um it showed me that when you waste the gift that was given to you, it it will just be taken away from you and someone else will be put in your stead. That's exactly what he showed what was just shown. He said, take what was what was given to him and give it to the one who doubled his talents. And that should be scary, because that's the most high shown, okay. I gave you this and you did nothing with it, cool, judgment. And, and I'm afraid of that. So I always tell myself, all right, what can I do? What work can I do? And then I find it and then I do it. And this is what we all should be thinking about now. And I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, this is, um, this, is um, this is basically a note to myself, what I'm speaking. Because... I realize, yes, sometimes we may slack a little bit, and I'm a big proponent of that, I'm going to be honest. But I, I realize, all right, if I'm going this hard with my regular career or whatnot, why can't I do that for the most high? I mean, at the end of the day, what good is a career in this country doing for me? I mean, yeah, it's paying bills, but, but I mean, is it going to lead me to the kingdom? Will it? Or will the gifts that the Most High gave me help me to, to stack up my chips in heaven? Read. For unto every one half shall be given, and he shall have abundance. For from him that have not shall be taken away even that which he hath. And cast ye that unprofitable servant unto outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So where is this unprofitable servant going? Read again. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. There, he, there's going to be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So this shows, yo, it's an obligation to do the work. And I'm going to keep re reiterating that. It's an obligation. Once again, we all in here have something we can bring to the table. First off, to grow our church. And what I realize about working, it brings us together and it helps us to understand each other. And the more we can understand each other, the more we can love each other. Right? And it also builds trust within each other as well. So, I mean, never doubt what you can bring. If you, and look, if you find something that the church may, be, may, may falter at, that means it's your obligation to bring it forward to the deacons and the elder. And be like, all right, look, elder, um, we should do this. He's going he's gonna, to um, um, analyze it and be like, all right, cool. You just bought something that can build a body. That's all of us. No matter, wh no matter um, where your, your position or what not. You have something you can bring to the body to help it to grow. So let's work together. And I'm going to show how it prepares us for Christ, for Christ's second coming, because we understand when he comes or w whatever our end is, whether it be if we're going to live towards his coming or to our death or whatever, we need to be found working, doing something. Because being idle is Satan's playground. The more we find ourselves not doing anything that is profitable for the most high and, and the body and the body of Christ, Satan will find you something to do. And sin is what kept us back all this time. So like, like on Romans 12 says, matter of fact, let's go there. Hold what you got and go to Romans 12. Um. Romans 12 and 1. Con? Wait, hold on. No, no con yet. Romans, Romans 12. Wait, is it Hebrews? Hold up. It's, it's Hebrews 12. I'm sorry. Yes. I mentioned sin and how sin holds us back. When you dare say con. Con. The book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verse 1. 
Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. So what that statement is mentioning is um, it's referring to what was spoken about in Hebrews 11 concerning how our fathers and those of, the, of, the, of um, old operated in faith. So it says, wherefore, seeing we also are compassed with so great a cloud of witnesses, talking about those who operated in faith. Read. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which do so easily beset us. Let us do what? Let us lay aside every weight. Every weight, everything that's holding us back. Read. And the sin which do so easily beset us. And the, and the things around us that can cause us to sin. Let us let go of that. Because that will hinder our work. It don't matter what the peer, the peer pressure is. It don't matter what we are, we are so exposed to. We have to ignore it. And we have to keep ourselves away from it. So that we don't appear to be sinners like the world. And matter of fact, read. And let us run with patience. Let us do what? And let us run with patience. Let's continue in this spiritual marathon. Despite the obstacles that will be before us. And we can't continue running if there's something holding us back. Again, going back into our self-examination. So you need to identify what's holding you back. What's keeping you from bringing forth that gift that you do possess. Read. Let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Let us keep running that race that was put before us. The race that we woke up into. Because when we woke up, we did not, we, we woke up knowing we Israel, but that was, we was always Israel before we woke up. Hmm. When we woke up, we woke up into, into our profession, our job. That's what we woke up into. We was shown what we, what we had to do with ourselves first, follow Christ, be baptized, let go of your sins, and now be a light to the world. That's what we woke up into. So being Israel is... I mean, we was always Israel when we, when we didn't know it. That's not the truth. Following Christ is the truth. And when, when you, and I'm, I'm going to do a lesson on this maybe in the future concerning following Christ and what it means. That means if, you, if you're following someone, you know what their path was and you're right behind them. And one thing Christ said, he said, um, my meat is to do the will of the Father that sent me. So if Christ sent us, what is our will to do? I mean, what is our job? Exactly. What did Christ do all his life? Follow the Most High and what else? And, and what? He put that work in. So Christ knew his obligation and he took it. And he died doing it. That was showing us exactly what we needed to do once we was given the truth, once we woke up. Read it from the top again, um, Hebrews 12. This is book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verse 1. Wherefore, seeing with also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doeth to so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking unto Yeshia, the author, and finisher of our faith. So it says, looking unto Yeshia, the author, the originator of, read. Looking unto Yeshia, the author and finisher of our faith. The author and the finisher of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. He, read that again. Who for the joy that was set before him. The endured, joy that was set before him. Read. Was set before him endured the cross. So what did Yeshia do? He understood the joy that was set before him. That was his position to rule as the king he's supposed to be. So he understood where he would have been at the end of his journey. And we should all have that same, that, that same sight. Understanding our goal and doing what we need to do to get there. That's exactly what Yeshia did. Read that again. Looking unto, looking unto Yeshia, the author and finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. He endured the cross. Despising the shame, and is set down the right hand of the throne of Ahiah. So he knew he had to go through all that 
just to get to where he is now. He had to endure his cross. That means understand his burden and the burden it was to do the work that he had to do. And what? Die. And what else? This, it despising says this, the shame. Despising the shame. Being put to shame. Like, you seen what happened with him. The way they spit in his face. They smacked him. They, put, they, they, they covered his face and said, all right, I'm going to hit you and prophesy who did this to you. And mind you, and I look at this, this is, this is by people who he created. He was put to shame by his own creation. If you look at it, we understand Christ did the work, did the, did the creation. So he had to be put to death by straight sinners. Read. Despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand, throne, right hand of the throne of Ahiah. But consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against him. You see that? It says, consider him that endured such contradiction. It's a contradiction for um, to be condemned to sin by straight sinners. <laughs> right? This is exactly what happened to Yeshaya, yet he endured. He endured. He knew his mission, and he kept with it. And he told us, all right, you do the same now. I showed you how it's done. Read. For consider him that endures such contradiction of sinners against him, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. So this shows us if we don't con continuously look to what Yeshia left, left for us, we'll be wearied. We'll start to lack faith and start to question what is this we following? We'll do all that if we ignore what Christ did. That's why it says, um, for consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wary. You have to consider this, and if you don't, you'll be faint in your minds. You'll begin to lack that faith. Read. Ye have not resisted unto blood. Striving, Read that again. Ye have not Ye have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. And ye have So hold that. We did not die in our sins. We have an opportunity to change now. Yeshaya did that for us. So how bad is your, your, your job now? It's easy. Yeshaya did the hard part. Read that again. Ye have not, ye have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. We didn't go through what Yeshaya went through. So we can't complain when it comes to this work. Because none of us are doing this to end up on the cross to die for Israel. Right? Read. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speak unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint with thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Most High loveth, he chastens and scourges every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure the chastening, a higher dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, chastisement, if you be without chastisement, wherefore all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons? That's scary. <laughs> okay? If you're not getting chastised, Especially for, being, for, for, for not doing what you're obligated to do. Understand you are a bastard at that point. The Most High will chastise those who he loves. So, I mean, if you're not getting any chastisement, what does that mean? No, it'll mean, it'll mean you're a Gentile. It means, all right, the Most High doesn't find you worthy. No more. Because you're not doing what you're obligated to do. So he will chastise, he will continue to whip those that he loved. So that beating, and, and you know, we, we know when it's coming. We know when it's happening to us. So that, that, let, that lets you know, okay, maybe I'm doing something wrong. What, all right, Father, help me out. What do I need to do? <laughs> this is my daily conversation with myself. <laughs> we all should be asking ourselves that. We all should be looking into that. Read. Furthermore, we have our fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and right. we gave them reference. And we did what? 
and we gave them reference. Shall we not much rather be subject be in subjection unto the the father of spirits and live? Right. So but when our mother and father whooped our behinds, we gave we showed them respect eventually. We cried about it. Oh, I don't like you. Oh, why you did this to me? But yet we still respected them. Why not do the same for our father? And our parents would usually beat us for us doing something we know was wrong, yet we chose to do the wrong thing anyway. So that beating was for us to get up and do what's right, to do what you're obligated to be doing. So the same going to happen for us toward the, from the Most High. If we're not doing what we are supposed to be doing, we will be whipped. Read. But they verily for a few days chastened us, and after their own pleasure. But he for it was for their own pleasure. Read. But he for our profit. But the Most High would do it for our profit. Because he see good in us, and we're just sitting back and wasting it. Read. That we might be partakers of his holiness. Now no chastening. You, you see how great the Most High is? I'm sorry, brother. It says that we might be partakers of his holiness. The Most High wants us to be with him. Mm. So he's going to keep correcting us until we do what we need to do to get there. Read. Now no chastising or chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous. We know it's not joyous. Read. But grievous. Nevertheless, afterward, it yielded the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Wherefore, lift up, thy, lift up the hands which hang down, and the feeble well, you knees. Can, you can stop there, brother. Go back to Matthew 25. No, matter of fact, hold up. Oh, no, we read that. Go to Luke chapter 12. Are you all still, are you all still with me? All right, all right cool. Praise the most high. Um, <coughs> chapter 12. Um, right, thank you. Um, we could start at verse 31. Con? Matter of fact, Let's go to verse 22. I'm going to go straight down. <clears throat> this is the book of Luke, chapter 12, verse 22. And he said unto his disciples, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life. What ye shall eat, neither for the body, what ye shall put on. The life is more than meat, and the body is more than raiment. Verse 24. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap which neither have storehouse nor born, and the higher feed of them. How much more are ye better than the fowls? So we all familiar with this parable, right? All right, cool. Keep reading. Verse 25. And which of you which taken that thought can add to his stature one cubit? Verse 26. If ye then be not able to do that thing which is least, why take ye thought for the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow, the toil not. They spend not. And yet I say unto you that Solomon in all his gl glory was not arrayed like one of these. If then a higher so clothed the grass, which is to the day in the field, and tomorrow in is cast into the oven, how much more will ye how much more will he clothe you, O ye of little faith? So why I went here first is because like I mentioned earlier, we tend to worry too much about the things that the Most High knows that we need. And if we're focused on working, we know we'll be provided everything we need. So there's no, there'll be no space for worrying and wondering, okay, what am I going to eat? Where am I going to sleep? Um, what, what am I going to wear? And we're going to come to a time where we probably will be in a position that we will think to worry of these things. We're not there now, not really. But there will be a time where we would, we would be there. And we'll be, we'll be thanking the Most High that we even made it 
another day because we get, we get comfortable and sometimes we don't even thank the Most High for waking us up mm. th the morning. But there will be a time where we will because it will be so hard. And like I said, if we work, we will be provided what we need. So um, continue reading. Matter of fact, go to verse 31. This is the book of Luke, chapter 12, verse 31. But rather ye seek the kingdom of Ahia, and all these things shall be added unto you. You see that? Seeking the kingdom means um, your understanding where your treasure is. And the scripture says where your treasure is, that's where your heart will be. So if your treasure or you feel like your riches are on this earth, your mindset will only be car carnal. It will be sensual. It will be worldly. What good is that? Your mindset should be towards the most high. So when you think on that, you, the first thing you, you would understand is your obligation. Your job. Okay, this, this, this truth is a profession. It's not just something you just have and, all right, I'm here on Sabbath, what's next? It's, it's not that. It's not just to come to Shabbat and then you forgot everything you did. I mean, you, you forget all about that and you operate in regular during the week. And you know what? It's so easy to... Um, it's so easy to appear righteous before the body, but how is your image when you're amongst those that are without? Con. Okay, you don't want to be a hypocrite. And you're around, the, you're around the people in the world more than we are together, which is kind of backwards, honestly. But how you operating in the body with, with each other is how, you, how we should be operating to those that don't know better. And it's, it's going to come to a point where your actions and how you operate toward the people in the world, your, your, your characteristic itself may be the only Bible people read. Because it'll be like, all right, this, this brother is different. This sister is different. Now I want to follow Christ. That, it, seemed, it seemed good. That may, be the, that may be a way you get someone into the truth. So that's a work in itself, <laughs> the way you walk, the way you keep yourself from appearing evil, keeping yourself from um, the appearance of evil. That's a work too. Read. Verse, 30, verse 32. Fear not, little flock, but it's your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. So that you have and give alms. Read that again. <laughs> so that you have and give alms. It Provi says, so that you have and give alms. Con. What's that? What's, what's giving alms? Okay. Good deeds, right? Right? What else? Setting good examples? Okay. All right. I like that. Alms. Um, that involves taking your material assets and putting it to use to another person's benefit. Con. I hope I worded that um, That's right. right. That's what I said. And not only that, it's glorifying the most high. Because you understand that that's an act of love. Which is, when we read the fruits of the spirit, that's the first one on the list. Love. That's a work too. So it, it all, I mean, everything I'm mentioning encompasses work. It's, it's letting you get up and doing something with the truth that was given to you. And it says in um, one of Paul's writings, I think it's in Acts, it's better to give than to receive. Uh, right? Mm -hmm. So what it says here, it says, sell that ye have and give alms. 
make your, make your benefactions be many. And it don't matter if those who receive from you thank you or not. You know the most high will reward you. So there goes you identifying where your treasure is. You understand what you have here is nothing. So why not sell it and give it to those who need something? That might be Christ you're helping out. Because he's going to ask you, okay, I was hungry, you didn't feed me. I was thirsty, you didn't give me water. I was naked, you didn't give me any clothes. Okay, brother, sister, where was your work? I was right before you and, you, and you did not help me. I was right amongst you, right? Read. Sell that you have and give alms. Provide yourself bags which wax not old, a treasure in the heavens that fell of not, where no thief approaches, neither mouth corrupted. Right. For where, you, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Let your loins be girded about, and your lights burning. When the scripture says, um, let your loins be girded about, that was, that's, that's known as um, getting ready. So what you doing, you, you get yourself, you fix your clothes, you women tie up your hair, and you get ready to do something. Get ready to put that work in. And let your light shine before, before those that are without. Read. And ye yourselves like unto men, that wait for, the Lord, for their Lord. When it he says, but ye yourselves like unto men that wait for their Lord. That waiting is not just sitting back. That's working. Because he, you know he left you as um, servants over his house. So you have to do something. Read. When he will return. And when he will return, when Yeshia comes back, read. And when he will return from the wedding, that when he cometh and knocketh, they may open unto him immediately. You Let will open up to him what? Immediately. You will open up to him immediately. You're not going to peek, peek through the peephole and like, oh, who's it? Oh, it's me, Yeshai. Uh, um, hold on, let me get some things done. You don't want to be like those five foolish versions. You want to be prepared when he comes, so that when he does come, you, you immediately... You, you're, you're bold unto his coming, like the scripture says. You're not going to be like, oh, man, um, I forgot to do this. And you know what? This is why Yeshaya says that he's going to come as a thief in the night. He's going to come when we, not, he, we, when we don't expect it. And it's better that way. Because if we knew when he was coming, we would look at how was, all right, Yeshaya coming next week. Let me fix myself up. So it's better that he's coming the time that he's coming. That's, that leaves you, as I said before, you're going to be doing something. You don't want to be caught at that hour of um, temptation when you're, just, when you're slacking. Read. Blessed are those servants. Whom Blessed are those servants. Whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Read. Verily, I say unto you, that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to meet. And will come forth and serve them. Verse 38. And if he shall come in in the second watch or come in the third watch and find them so, bless all those servants. That second watch or third watch was an understanding of um, a time during the night, if I'm not mistaken. The second watch was, I think it was between um, 9 p.m. to 12, so called. And the third watch was 12 to 3. So that's time during the night. That's why it says he's coming as a thief in the night. So it says, and if he shall come in the second watch or come in the third watch, read. And find them so, blessed are those servants. And this know, that if the good man of the, the house have known what hour the thief will come. So if you knew exactly when he was coming. He would have watched. You would have watched. And have not suffered his house to be broken through. So now... If, if we knew what time he was coming, that would, that would allow us to work as with eye service. You know what that means? That's working when we know our mass is right there before us. <laughs> so you want to get caught working when he comes. You want, you want him to find you first keeping the commandments, keeping the laws, operating in the, in the way that you should be operating, and then doing what you need to do to build your, your nation back. 
Read. Or to help build your nation back. Be ye therefore ready also, for the Son of Man cometh at the hour when ye think not. So he's going to come when you're not even thinking about it. So again, when it comes to our gifts that we, that, each and all, that we all have, let's bring it forth. What can we do to make our church better? What can we do to help the rest of our people wake up? And I used to tell myself, I used to, I used to look at what I, do, what I did and whatnot, like um, the whole street preaching thing. And I said to myself, you know what, Brother Amath? Street preaching is not all that's there to do. And that's why when, when the elder brought, brought forth that we're going to do the um, the house to house thing, I had to try to contain myself from jumping up and saying yes, because now this allows everyone to do something. And that's a good look. That's something different. I'm not going to lie, I almost had tears in my eyes to hear that because it allows us to work, all of us. We all can do something as simple as go house to house and give the gospel. Right? So I'm like, yo, I want to be a part of that. That's, the scriptures say to do it. So I said to myself, listen, it's, just, it's not just street preaching for me, brother. I'm out there. I mean, there's, there's more to do. All right? There are some people that are hungry out there that, that, have, that have yet to be fed. There are some blind out there that have yet to be seen, to see. Right? There are some widows and fatherless who have yet to been attended to. We have so much work to do. So many of the sick have not been visited. We have a lot of work. The harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. I mean, let's work, man. <laughs> let's work. Where we at? Get me, um, I'm going to end it. Is there, I'm, a, I'm good? I got one more scripture. All right, cool. I'm going to get, um, 1 Corinthians 15. <laughs> for, for my brother. <clears throat> and we're going to start at, yo, let me get there. 1 Corinthians Wait, hold up. Where's First Corinthians? There we go. <clears throat> First Corinthians chapter 15. Matter of fact, I want to get two more scriptures. That's okay. All right. Um, we could start at... Let's start at verse 45. I might jump around, but we can start there. Con? <clears throat> Con. 45. This is the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, verse 45. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Who's, who's the last Adam? It says he was made a quickening spirit. Read. How be it that was not first, which is spiritual, but that which, it, what, that which is natural, and afterward that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth. Earthly, the second man is of the most high from heaven. Right. Verse 48. And as the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. Read that again. As as is the earthy, such are they also that is earthy. So we are, we were just like our father Adam. Read. And earthy. As, and as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. So now where, where should we be at? We should follow the second, the second Adam. Spiritually, heavenly. And where Christ made it to his resurrection, everything he did, to get there concerning works, we should follow suit. That's the only way we would get to where he went. He went. That resurrection. Read. And 
as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. See that? Read. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of the mo most high. So that means us in our, um, I'm going to use a Christian term, unregenerate state, <laughs> meaning our, ourselves walking in the flesh, we cannot enter into the kingdom like that. Right? Read. Neither do of corruption inherit incorruption. Neither does our incorrupt um, bodies can dwell within something that's, I mean, our corrupt bodies dwell within an incorrupt uh, situation. Read. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall now all sleep, but we shall be changed. Right. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be, shall be raised incorruptible. Right. And we shall be changed. And we shall be changed. How many of us is ready for that? Be honest. We, we are not. So we have a lot of work to do, like I said. And um, that's why to a certain extent, I can respect the, the Christian church because, like, for example, the Jehovah Witnesses, as off as they are, at least they out there doing something. I mean, I'm pretty sure when they standing outside with their little watchtower book just like this in front of you, I'm pretty sure their arms are getting tired, but they're adamant with their work. Right? Look at the Muslims, how adamant they are. We serve the Most High God or higher. We should do the same. We should be doing it better than them. Right? They've, they, they've, they worship in Satan. So as strict as these other religions are, we should do it better than them. Serving our, our, our father. As mighty, mighty and great as he is. And he has so much patience. He's still waiting on us. Let's not wait, make him wait any longer. Let's, let's do it. Read. For this corruptible must be put on incorruption. And this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? Death, where is your sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin. The sting of death is what? The, the sting of death is sin. So what, what, what allows us, what's keeping us subject to death? That same thing that's holding us back. That's the issue, correct. And death is a spirit within itself that we can overcome. But we have to stay focused. Endure. Persevere. Stay focused. Know, your, know what you're obligated to doing. And do it. Read. And the strength of sin is the law. And the strength of sin is the law. Read. But thanks be to a higher, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Yeshua the Christ. Therefore, right. my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast. Be steadfast. Unmovable. Unmovable. Always bounding in the work of the Lord. Doing what? Always abounding in the work of the Lord. Doing what? Always abounding in the work of the Lord. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. No, you're not just doing it for men or just, just be seen. You're doing it for the Lord. Read. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Most High. Your labor in the Most High is not in vain. So, for example, if you can't wake up a family member, no, it's, yo, it's not your job to, to, wake, to, to wake them up. The, your job is to bring forth the word and let the Most High water that seed. God. Just know you're still doing something that, can, that may lead to that individual waking up through the most high, but know that if it fails, your work was not in vain. You still did what was given to you. You still brought forth your talent and you tried to double it. You didn't, you didn't dig it under the ground. You didn't hide it. You didn't operate slothful. You did what was given to you and you, you, made, you put it to use. You put it to use. Read that again. 
Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always bounded in the works of the Lord, for as much as ye know that the, your labor is not in vain, in the most high your power. Your labor is not in vain. My last verse I'm going to go into is Ecclesiastes 9 and 11. I'm going to end it there. <clears throat> Ecclesiastes in the Old Testament. Chapter 9. Hold up. Wait, hold up. No, that's not it. Hold up. Hold up, bear with me, I'm coming. All right. <clears throat> oh, it was um, Ecclesiastes 9 and 10. Con? Yeah, that's it. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 10. I was there. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 10. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do. Hold up. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do. That means when you identify what we need to grow, read. Do it with thy might. Put your best foot forward God. and bring it, bring it up and do what you need to do. Do that work. Read it again. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do. Do it with thy might, but there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave. You can't work while you're dead. <laughs> so while you have the opportunity today, I encourage everyone bring to the table what, what we need to grow this body and to improve it. Whatever ideas you have, positive ideas. And we all have an intricate part to play in this work. So with that, I'm going to say um, all praises to the Most High, and I pray everyone gains something from it. And um, bless you all, and thank you. Keep it going for the Most High. The word that came out. Brother and Deacon, Brother Deacon Amav, you know, clearly he's back. <laughs> so, you know, when we were uh, Deacon Amav, he was, uh, you know, paying off a, a student debt. And that, uh, you know, he, he wanted to make sure that uh, his debt is he's paid, to, you know, how these colleges are. They, they keep you in debt. So that took a lot of time of him building. And, and you know, he's a young man. And, uh you know, he, he, he ended, it, it was funny because he was telling the same thing. It's like the lesson is a lesson that I, I taught myself, you know, and, and because he recognized he was laboring uh, for the things of man. You know, you got to pay this debt. You got to do this. I got to do that. You know, that's most young people do. And, 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 and uh, that's what they should do and things of that nature, you know, prepare for their future. And uh, so Deacon Amar was doing that. And, and, uh, but he said, you know what, uh, we got to do the same, the same might that 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 took to to uh resolve those issues and, and and establish yourself as an individual in life you should always uh put that same strength in establishing the kingdom so so it's, it's, it's a powerful message so we, we, we're going to continue and i'm going to land back on the same conversation that the deacon was was establishing uh and this is the lesson that came down by the the, the elders and it's, it's, it's profound because it's almost touching on the same thing in, 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 in a different way, but it's in the same uh, uh, spirit. Uh, the title of this uh, lesson that came down by the elders is Child Discipline. Now, it, it's always profound because the Mosai always use things that we can always relate to. 
you know, he says, you know, the kingdom of heaven is like a man went down the field. We could relate to those things and those stories. It's about ten virgins. Once, you know, ten five was ready, the other was not. We could relay these things. We could see these things. We could experience these things. So we're going to go into the understanding on child discipline. Okay, first we're going to start reading the commentary there. And then we're going to go into this journey that the responsibility as parents uh that is bestowed upon us. The responsibility as parents is bestowed upon us to continue or to s stop the curses and, and, and uh, continue the righteousness that's been taught in this body. So we're going to read, we're going to start with the commentary first. Uh, but Shamar, you could start. Uh, 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 Akio was messing you up with, with uh, Shamar's name. Uh, Zomar. Uh, Zomar. Right. Uh, uh, you could read the commentary there, brother, if you don't mind. So, it is often frowned upon to discipline our children physically in our modern society set up under Satan. It is, it is this by design to destroy the very fabric of our morally healthy society. If so, why do we not look to uphold the old ways of child discipline and instead push another way of parenting which is, was dictated to us by our captors. And one thing that I noticed is that the best way for you to master something is to try to teach it. So if you want to be disciplined, the best way to do it is to teach discipline. So if I'm a teacher and you're my student, I say, listen, teach this to the class. What do you got to first do? Learn it. Oh, my God. Teacher asked me to do this. All right, let me. That's the first thing. So really, the bet I, it's it's. I remember when I was in martial arts, and I became when I became a junior instructor, I became even better because I had to up my game with the students. The kick is done this way, not that way. So I had to make sure I'm doing the kick right. So the first line of defense is who? Who's the first people you teach? Your children. So if you're teaching your children to be uh, honorable people and you're not honorable is it going to work right so let's go into the scriptures uh, let's go to Deuteronomy 21 and 8 20, 21 and 18 let's start at the beginning Con? the book of Deuteronomy chapter 21 verse 18 if a man have a stubborn and rebellious son, which will not obey the voice of his father or the voice of his mother, and that when they have chastening him, will not hearken unto them, then shall his father and his mother lay hold on him and bring him out unto the elders of the city and unto the gate of his place. And they shall say unto the elders of the city, this is our son. This our son is stubborn and rebellious. He will not obey our voice, he is gluttoning, and a drunkard. And we have to start implementing this within the nation. If you are a parent, okay, and we have to start setting up a, a structure that now that all the kids in this, in, in this church understand. They have, how many men do we have here? Well, with, uh, with 40, 50 right now? They got 40, 50 fathers they have to listen to. So there's going to be no more. You, you, you are no longer a single mother. Okay, because now you got, you got brothers that could come to your house and correct your child. Con. And we're going to start establishing that soon. Con. Because it takes a, a community to raise a child. So it's, it's going to be, if, if, if there's no dad at home, that will replace what? You, don't want the, you want me to call the deacons? No, 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 no. <laughs> deacons, I need to come to this house because my, my child's not doing his homework. Because that's the scripture. Mm -hmm. That's what happens when, we, when you have parents that you have this kids that were disobedient. Right? Read that again. And they shall, they shall say unto the elders of the city, This our son is stubborn and rebellious. He will not obey our voice, and he is glutton and a drunkard. Elder, we need to talk. My son is acting up. What he's doing? So you see that? It takes a community to raise a child. It, keep reading. And all the, men of this, uh, all the men of his city shall stone him with stones. They were serious back then. It was not playing around back in the days. There was no grace. <laughs> they that disobeyed Moses' law by two or three witnesses will be killed. 
Right? Read. That he died. That he died. Read. So shall thou put evil away from among you, mm. and all Yahshua Allah shall hear and fear. And fear. But even death didn't <coughs> correct us, or the fear of death, because we still went off. But to show you that we have to start implementing within our body how to properly discipline our children as a body. So no father or mother should be struggling without uh, their child without the help of the church. We have to get into other people's business. We have to get each other's business. What, what, what can we help you with? And especially with our children, right? So read the commentary, uh, brother. So according to the law, there was a serious amount of accountability on the parents' part when it came to keeping the child in line with the laws of the Most High. They were commanded to be the first to grab hold of the rebellious child so that they be judged so that the evil will not spread. Just like today, we have several real responsibilities with our children so that they don't become rebellious and they teach others to do the same. For instance, you, can, you could have a child that is normally is in order, but when he or she see the liberty that one of their friends have in their household due to no order, they attempt to imitate that friend. That evil has now spread from one house to the next. But, you know, Billy, I, I saw Billy and Johnny, you know, he's allowed to stay over, you know, to 12 o'clock at night. Right? And see, in these days, it's even difficult because why? When your kids are sleeping, what are they doing? Over the bed. What you doing? Watching TV? Oh, you, you still up? Yeah. So that spirit could even go viral. Right? The key, uh, go to uh, Leviticus chapter 20, verse 9. Con? Say con when everybody's there. This is the book of Leviticus chapter 20, verse 9. For everyone that curseth his father or his mother shall be surely put to death. He have cursed his father or his mother, his blood shall be upon him. So it's very important for you to respect your parents. Not only your parents, but your whole ancestor, your, your, your family tree. It's important for your name of whatever your last name is of your family. It has a good reputation. So it should be a situation that your children, okay, should, should represent you. That, that is extremely important, and, and, and we need to understand that raising a child cannot be a, 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 a single parent job. It's a community job, because the scripture is going to show you that. Uh, keep reading the, uh, read the commentary, uh, brother. It has become commonplace to see children in our neighborhoods with no respect towards their parents. The society itself teaches rebellionists against all but the government. Children attack parents, and parents could care less whether their children are Order is in, out the window in our communities. Okay, let's go to Isaiah 3 and 12. Well, anyone is there? You say Khan. Isaiah 3, verse 12. All right. The book of Isaiah, chapter 3, verse 12. As for my people, Children are their oppressors, and ru women rule over them. O oh, my people, they which lead thee cause thee to err, and destroy the ways of thy paths. So, read that again nice and slow, brother. As for my people. As for my people. Children are their oppressors. Children are their oppressors, read. And women rule over them. And women rule over them, read. O oh, my people. O oh, my people. They which lead thee cause thee to They earth. that lead mean what's the word lead means it's leading you so who is now leading the men now children and women mm. and how is that you got older men want to be like what young men mm. i want to be the latest you know what's the latest style before it was the kid following wearing the hat and wearing the the the, the tie like daddy now you got daddy with the head backwards trying to be like billy Sagging his pants. Yeah. You see that? Okay. <laughs> Keep reading. Just read the commentary. The 
commentary. The men of the community have gave way to the children and allowed them to dictate what goes on there. This was a targeted agenda against our people in order that the gangs would overrun us and the righteousness would now be fearful and allow it. Exactly. So now you have, that's why I'm very crucial on the brothers. So when you come in here, collar shirt. Dress up. Dress respect, respectfully. Con. Okay, because we can't lead the nation unless you become that person that you need to, uh, that the nation will be inspired to be led by. Okay? Uh, next verse. Uh, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14. There's an agenda to take down the black and Hispanic men from being in a position of leadership, that you are now even in, uh, uncomfortable being in that position because you haven't been in that position for a long time. You're either following uh, the women's agenda, the feminist agenda, that you cannot longer speak up as a man because now you're a male chauvinist. You're, you know, you're, you're, you're being rude. You're, why you speak so loud? And why you talk the way you talk? Because that's how man's supposed to talk, right? So rough. And it, that's the feminine agenda. So it's not necessarily uh, uh, you know, the women, but the whole feminist agenda. That now men can no longer be men. Because now, you know, they're going to offend someone. Okay? And then everybody wants to be like the young people. The MTV generation. All right? Uh, let's go to Hebrews, chapter 2, verse 10, 14. The book of Hebrews, chapter 2, verse 14. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also him likes, likewise took part of the same, that through death he may destroy him that had the power of death, that is, the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Okay. To read the commentary. Through fear of death, through conflict of our men have given up our authority in the communities. This is just like we gave up our own customs and beliefs through the fear that our oppressors would destroy us. So, the, so, so with the understanding, when you read, read Hebrews again, chapter 2, verse 13. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same. So Christ took part of the same, right? He became a man like any other man, right? Read. That through the death he might destroy him that had the power of death. Now through the death he might destroy him. To, so what he, Christ was born with the understanding that he's going to die a horrible death. Mm. And he did not care. It did not hinder him from his work. So understand it. You're going to die. You know, and, and, and like I said, we, we don't know exactly what age that he died. You know, some say 32, 34. We're doing some research on that. But he, underst he understood that he had a date marked for death. So he was not afraid of what? Death. Because he knew he was going to die. So what has happened, read the commentary again. Through, through fear of death. Through fear of death. Through conflict, our men have given up our authority in the communities. Because we're too scared. We, I don't want any problems. This is just like when we gave up our own customs and beliefs through the fear that our oppressors would destroy us. That's it. Okay. So what the understanding is, is that they owe every single time when they took us to the cargo slave ships, who they, 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 they took down first? The, the strongest men. Right? When, when it, that's what they tell you when you go to, you know, when you go into the, 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 the courtyard or, 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 or when you're in jail and you want to get your respect, who do you look for? Who's the tougher guy? Who's the biggest guy? Because everybody else is like, okay, you know who he took down? So that's, how, well, that's what they do. That's what they did to us, right? Uh, let's go to Proverbs 13 and 24. Thirteen and twenty-four. Thirteen and twenty-four. All right. All right. The book of Proverbs, chapter thirteen, verse twenty-four. He that spareth the rod hateth his son. If you spare your rod, your stick, the belt, you hate your children. 
You know why? Because <clears throat> I always tell my, my, my wife this. When I had to whip my daughter, she was younger. I haven't whipped for a long time. I, like, it takes the most disciplined time that you have to be. Like, when I am, I am less angered when, I matter of fact, I wait until I'm not angry anymore to whip my daughter. Because I know that that's the time that I have to be more disciplined. And it has to be done. It, it, you understand? So, so with, when, when you whip your daughter or your child and, 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 and things of that nature, it's an emotional thing you have to go through in your body. And what happens is, is your most parents just, just get lazy. And you just, uh, all right, I'll, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Right? Uh, what was that comedian? Uh, uh, what's that? Uh, Kevin Hart. He said, when, uh, he, uh, fathers are the worst babysitters. Because father, all they do, <laughs> they, sit, they sit in the chair. <laughs> They're like, what is that? Don't even go in there. Why'd you what, what was that? That's a toilet? That's, that's a fire? <laughs> I smell fire. That's all, <laughs> that's all we do. <laughs> we stay in that chair. We don't move from that chair. <laughs> the kids be running around the house. <laughs> You know, and the mother comes over like, what the, honey, what happened? These kids, you know. But that's us. So it takes, it takes energy, right? It takes energy to discipline your kids and, and, and to check up on them. It takes time. You know, you, you come home and you're tired. You don't want to, you know, be bothered with the world, right? So that goes to, that's to show you that that scripture is high science. You hate your children because you're saying this television show is more important and checking my, my son's homework or what have you. Con. That's what you're telling, right? Read that again. He that spareth the rod hateth his son, but he that loveth, his, loveth him chasteth him be times. Okay. Read, read the commentary. People say they love their children, but they never look to discipline them when they do wrong. The scriptures state that it is a sign of hatred for your child. If you love your child, you would teach him limits, therefore... They don't destroy themselves in the future through rebellious behavior. The society makes it as it's disciplining your child is hateful when it's the act exact opposite. Okay, let's go to Proverbs 19, 18. Proverbs 19 and 18. Con. Con. The book of Proverbs chapter 19, verse 18. Chasten thy son while there is hope, and let not thy soul spare for his crying. So the commentary says, in other words, don't wait until your child and adult to, uh, to try to discipline them. The time is now where they are still able to, to you are able to uh, uh, mold them into an order, orderly individual. Mm -hmm. You got to get them early. And that comes not only within the children, but within the church. What does that mean? When somebody comes to that door, they got to see the order from the jump. If they see us all, lot of, all over the back body one another, you know, they're just sitting there and they're hearing all kinds of nonsense. Okay, you already corrupted them. It's already too late. And see, our problem is, is that we're working beyond the hay ball sometimes with our children and our lives. You understand? Try to correct them after they have seen the wrong. Now it's like, oh, okay, now you're trying to discipline me, Daddy? Now? I'm, told, you know, I'm 17 years old. I haven't seen you for 10 years. <laughs> right? That's the problem. Proverbs 22 and 6. The book of Proverbs, chapter 22, verse 6. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he will not depart from it. Okay. So, it, it, and, and this is also a, a life lesson even as a, as a body because now we've gotten more disciplined, we've gotten more strict in regards to how we operate as a church, and people are not used to it. Mm -hmm. oh, you, now, you've been leading for three years. What's, what's going on with now? So I noticed that it has to be from the beginning, from the jump, from exactly when people walk the door. And that's, it starts at individuals' home. It starts with our church. And then we'll take that discipline into the world. And people could see what? Our light. 
but it has to start with us, right? So let's continue. Let's go to Proverbs 23. We're going to run through these scriptures real quick. Proverbs 23, verse 12. The book of Proverbs, chapter 23, verse 12. Okay, this is our old quick English, so if you want to get the scriptures, because I know there's a little confusion, even on my end. If you can read it, that's fine. But old quick English is always a challenge for me. Apply thy heart unto instructions, and thy ears to the words of knowledge. In uh, 13 and 14. Withhold not correction from the child, for as thou beatest him with the rod, he shall not die. You ain't gonna, you're not kill him. Read. Thou shalt beat him with the rod, and shall deliver his soul from hell. Okay. And see, and, and, and we lost that. We lost that when we, you know, uh, Desiree uh, tells me that her, her grandmother walked around with a whip. It was like part of her arsenal. <laughs> it was not even, <laughs> let me get my slippers, let me get my, you know, coffee and, and my whip. Because <laughs> I may have to whip one of these kids today, you know. Okay, that is lost today, right? Now you get, you know, uh, child uh, protection agencies. And all these things are a direct, uh, vi uh, these all institutions are set up to stop you from keeping these commandments. To go against the, the, the culture of the Most High. Okay? So uh, let's read the commentary. So many people, because they never experienced discipline as a child, grow to become the worst types of individuals. Lack of order at the young age breeds disorder when older. So, so when you are disorderly, now you have a child. What do you think is going to happen? You don't even know how to keep order yourself. Right? So now you're trying to teach order, right? Uh, let's go to Proverbs. Let's okay. take Proverbs 29 and 15. Let's go there. Con. Con. The book of Proverbs, chapter 29, verse 15. The, ro the rod and reproof gives wisdom, but a child left to himself bringing his mother to shame. When the wicked are multiplied, transgressions increase but the righteousness shall see their fall. Correct thy son, and he shall give thee rest. Yea, he shall give thee delight unto thy soul. So then you know that you're correcting your, your child is an investment in your future? Con. Because now, if you're, you, you're, you're taking your seed, your race, your family forward. Okay, you have generations of, you know, grandmother's grandmother's grandma and, and grandfather, father and mother and son and son's kid is all in the same household. Nobody's moving the, 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 the family forward because you have what? Lack of discipline, right? Lack of sacrifice, right? Uh, let's go to Le uh, Leviticus chapter 19, 29. The book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 29. Do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore, lest the land fall to whoredom and the land become full of wickedness. And, and, and people don't even do this. When we, they don't even understand when we do this. When we allow our children, our daughter to dress a certain kind of way. God. Right? And then complain why she's coming home to you. Say, Dad, you know, a little boy pinched my butt this today. In school. You know, I, 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 these, these boys are always coming on to me. This happened, that happened. And that's how things happen in school. Then you get a phone call, then, then the child or the, or, or the father who's hardly there, now he wants to go to school and beat up some kid because he did this to the daughter. But is she dressing a certain way? Is she acting a certain way? Because, see, you only attract those people See, predators only attract those that are weak, those that are able to be uh, prey upon. So if you display certain behaviors to stop certain people of certain things, they're not going to mess with you. If you don't engage in certain conversations, if you don't dress a certain way, if you don't have certain you know, talk about certain things, 
And it, it's very difficult. And I think more and more the way, I, you know, the spirit has been put on me for a long time. So we have to start setting my home school system because it's becoming more difficult for our children to be going to these schools and these 13 years old and these 12 years old and these 11 years old talking about things we sh- they shouldn't be talking about. And it's all over the place. So we have to start giving, uh, uh, you know, putting our, 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 our effort bet forward. We have to start really embracing of be ye separate. Get out of her, my people. We have to really start embracing that. Okay. Uh, let's read... Uh, Let's read the commentary. There is a huge lack of order in the discipline of our daughters, which we're supposed to protect them from evil of the world. Our women become disorderly and learn, and learn from a young age attributes of the mentality of a prostitute, like using their appearance to get ahead in life. This also translates into a life of evil. The evil goes from one generation to the next. This is also apparent within the men, as we have learned to do, be whoremongers, chasing whatever moves instead of looking for a woman of a righteous merit. See that? And, it, and it's subtle. Um, a sister buys a new dress, and she calls her friend over. Hey, you know, I got this new dress. And they seen the you know, they're putting on the dress to show their friend. And they're walking back and forth. Oh, worker girl. And their daughter's right there. Right? Even as a, a simple as a television show. Oh, she, she is fierce. Look at her. Look at her. My, look what she's wearing. I gotta give me that. Right? And the daughter's just picking that behavior up. And then, and then you wonder why, and you turn around and be like, you shouldn't be wearing that. Go back to your room and wear something else. But mommy, you, that's weak. You was flirting back and forth. Right? So through example, is, is the best teacher. Okay, let's go to, to the testimony of Judah. Those that, that, that don't have the book, get the book. The testimony of Judah is the, uh, the 12 patriarchs. So let's read the testimony of Judah. Uh, I believe this is uh, chapter 23, yes. verse 1. The testament of Judah, chapter 23, verse 1. Now I have much grief, my children, because of your lewdness and witchcrafts and idolatries, which shall be a practice against the kingdom, following them that have familiar with spirits, diviner, diviners, and demons of error. Ye shall make your daughters singing girls and harlots, and ye shall mingle in the abominations of the Gentiles. For witchlings, saith the Lord, shall bring upon you famine and pestilence, death and the sword, beleaguering by enemies, and reveling of friends, the slaughter of children, the rape of the rape of women, the plundering of possessions, the burning of the temple of Ahia, the laying waste of the land, the enslavement of yourselves amongst the Gentiles. Isn't that the prophecy of Judah? So, <laughs> so Judah prophesied on Mark. That's why they took away these other books out the Bible. These books that, that, that which, uh, they, they, they are not, these are books that they are, you will not find them in the, book, in the Bible. These are part of the uh, pseudographica books or the books that are deemed pseudographica. Okay, uh, they would remove out of the Catholic Church in the year uh, 451 AD in the Council of Chalcedonian, or Chalcedon. Okay, they would remove because they brought too much prophecy and too much light on the wicked, which they were. So let's go to Proverbs, which is in the Bible, uh, 22, verse 15. Proverbs 22, 15. Con. The book of Proverbs, chapter 22, verse 15. Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. So, they're just kids. Let them be kids. Right? And what happened is that you allow that behavior to continue that and when people don't understand that they have done studies that the brain continues to develop even to the age of 19 and 20. Matter of fact, they said that the age of 20 is actually when the brain is fully the bu- developed. And that's profound because that's the age when what? In Israel, when men go to war. 
So you're even as as a teenager, okay, you're 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 it's okay. It's okay, baby. All right. <clears throat> even even as a teenager, you you could still your brain your brain is still developing. You're still in a position of uh, of learning. But right now you have a situation you got te- you know 17, 18, 19 year olds and when these these minds are still being developed, okay, the parents are what? Well, he's grown. No, he's not. I, I'm going to go to the club tonight. I'm, he's, he's grown. He could take care of himself. Right? And they div- who's raising them? MTV, VHS. Uh, 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 just, just showing my age, right? VHS. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, 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 what is that? BT, After Dark. You know, After, after Dark, right? The show After Dark, you know, it comes after that one. Uh-huh. Um, my wife's a teacher, right? This is this is actually profound to the actual lesson, and uh, she teaches junior high, and this is actually perplexing. But you know, like the the Muslim girls, the little girls that yeah. wear the whole you can only see the eyeballs. Yes. When their parents drop them off, they change and put on skirts. Hmm. And then when their mothers come to pick them up, they change back into their uniform. Yeah. And they say, "Well, we saw a Nicki, Na- Nicki Minaj video." Right. And that's why we we're doing this stuff. That's right. The, 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 those schools, man, it becoming it, they are becoming cesspools. We, it, it, it's so difficult because peer pressure is a spirit that, that is very difficult for young people to, to uh, overcome. You understand? It's, it's very difficult to overcome. So, so we have to start really looking about re- removing these kids out of these. Uh, they ain't learning anything. It's not anything they, they, they ain't really learning. You, you can't teach it themselves. Right. Okay. So let, uh, let's read down uh, an example of that. Let's go to second, uh, first Samuel chapter two, verse 22. First Samuel. Right, and let me read the commentary. It says, if a child is acting foolish, it is your duty to discipline them, to keep them on the right path. Okay, that's in Proverbs 22, uh, 15. So let's read the, uh, an example of that and what was done. Let's go to uh, first Samuel chapter two. Verse 22. Whenever everyone's there, say con. The book of 1 Samuel, chapter 2, verse 22. Now Eli was very old, and he heard all that his sons did until Yahshua Allah, and how they were laid, their women that assembled at the door at the tabernacle of the congregation. And he said unto them, Why do you such why do you do why do ye such things? For I heard of your evil do- dealings by all these people. Nay, my sons, for it is no good report that I hear. Ye make the Lord's people to transgress. If one man sin against another, the judge, shall, the judge shall judge him. But if a man sin against the Most High, he shall, who shall entreat of him? Notwithstanding, the hearken not unto the voice of thy father, because Ahiah would slay them. Okay, so let's read the commentary. Commentary. These two sons were incredibly wicked. And also they were known for taking more than their share from their sacrifices of the people. Eli, a priest of the temple, had a responsibility to discipline his children according to the law due to, the rebel- due to their rebellious ways. He did, not, and the, he did not, and the Most High decided he would handle the situation. Okay, so let's read how he handled the situation. Let's continue reading. Let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 4, verse 16. 1 Samuel 2, chapter over, verse 16. Con? Con. The book of Sam- 1 Samuel chapter 4, verse 16. And the man said unto Eli, I am that he come out of the arm I am he that came out of the army, and I fled today out and I fled today out of the army. And he said, What is that what is there done, my son? And the messenger answered and said, Israel is fled before the Philistines, and they have been also a great slaughter among the people. Then thy son and thy two sons also, Hophni and Phinehas. Phineas. Thank you. Are dead, and the ark of the Most High is taken. And it came to pass, when he made mention of the ark of the Most High, that he fell from off the seat backward by the side of the gate, and his neck break, and he died. And for and he was an old man and heavy, and he had judged Yahshua forty years. And his daughter-in-law, Phineas, wife, was with child, near to be delivered. And when she heard the tidings that the ark of the most high was taken and that her father-in-law and her husband were dead she bowed herself and travailed 
for her pains came upon her. And about the time of her death, the women that stood by her said unto her, Fear not, for thou hast born a son. But she answered not, neither did she regard it. Read commentary. Not on the commentary. Not only did the sons of not only did the sons die, but Eli and Phineas' wife as well. Our lack of discipline with our children not only shames us, but it also can put us in a bad position with the father, in which even death may be required. We must take things more seriously with our children, as they represent us all. Okay, let's go to uh, Sirach in the apocrypha. In the Apocrypha, chapter 30, verse 1. When everybody is there, please say Khan. And please, those that are new, uh, let's try to get invest in these books. Uh, they are very important. They are your guidebook of your life. Right. Sirach, in the Apocrypha, chapter 30, verse 1. Sirach, chapter 30, verse 1. The book of Sirach, chapter 30, verse 1. He that love of his son causing him to all to fill the rattle, that he may enjoy him in the end. He that chasteneth him son shall enjoy him joy in him, and he shall rejoice of him among his acquaintance. He that teacheth his son grieveth the enemy, and before his friends he shall rejoice of so him. Read that again, chapter uh, verse three. He that teacheth his son grieveth Grieveth the enemy. He and that teaches his son grieves the enemy. So don't you know if you're teaching your children, you are actually revolting against your enemy. Con. Because the enemy, the powers that be, they want you to take your children to school. They want you to, to the system teach them. You understand? So when I talk to my daughter, I said, listen, when you go into school, your job is to pass to the next grade. You're not going to learn much. Okay? You just make sure you, you, you do, do your tasks, do your homework, and, and what you want to learn, what you, what I'm going to teach you. Okay? So when, when she learned the, and, and it's profound because when she uh, was learning and she was uh, doing the, uh, the academy with my wife, and she, you know, the first academy, the first, the, the, the first lessons dealing with Genesis and then the, 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 the origin of, um, of the evolution and, and those, those names. And it was profound. I was like, Dad, you know, I knew about that already because I learned that in, in Elder Ricard. He was talking about that last week. So, you, you know, you, 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 so just tell your, your child, listen, if you're in school, that's, that's what you have. Those the kids... Those parents, they have to have their kids in school and say, your job is to pass the next grade. That's it. Get that high school diploma. After that, you know, get yourself, if you can get yourself a trade or learn something, uh, uh, you know, what, what you're going to do. Okay? But you're not going to learn much. Okay? So let's, let's, let's keep reading. Though his father die, he have, ye, yet, he ha, yet he is as though he were not dead. But so, he, so you know what that means? It says, although your father died, is, is as if you're not dead. In other words, they're supposed to see your fathers in you. Boy, you're just like your father. Mm. Well, he taught you well. Right? But now, that, that's sometimes a negative thing. Boy, he's just like his father. Yeah. Yeah. Daddy was a rolling stone, right? <laughs> what? So it's supposed to be um, you are, what your child is your clone. You're supposed to clone yourself. In the same way your father cloned uh, 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 himself through you. You're supposed to bring, go forward, right? Bring, bring, your, bring the race forward, not backwards, right? Let's continue. For he hath left one behind him that is like himself. You see that? Read. Okay, let's uh, go to the next stage. So let's, we, we're still in Sirach. Chapter 30. While he lied, he saw, he, he saw and rejoiced in him. And when he died, he was not sorrowful. He left behind him in anger against his enemies. Avenger against his enemies. And one that shall requite kindness of his, to his friends. 
He that maketh too much of his son shall bind up his wounds, and his bowels will be troubled at every cry. So what, what, what you got to be doing is sitting down with your kids. And, and whatever, read, read 6 again, verse 6. He left behind his avenger against his enemies, and one that shall requite kindness of his fr to his friends. Right, so what, what that is talking about is that the son is continuing. It's, it's cold in here, isn't it? Can we turn off the air conditioner? Is it me? Are we cold? We hot or is it me? Of course, a little, 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 little brisk. Little. You can turn it off. It's good because the sun is just coming down. It's talking about when it says he left behind him an avenger against his enemies. It's talking about that if your father had enemies in going against the family, you also are picking up that war to honor your family. You understand? And, it, and, and now what we see now is, is that now, you know, you got fa fathers that, and I see this in, in the nations. You may have a father, they have like a shoe store. You know, a Korean, you know, the guy came in here with his wife with 20 bucks. We all know the story. And opened a little, a little shoe store, right? And then the, that, the son is seeing his father building shoes. And then by the time the, the business passing down to his son and his grandson, now that family has three or four shoe stores. They have a chain of shoe stores. God. Because you're supposed to take what your father did forward. Well, what we do, what we, what we do when we get, we, we inherit the business of our house, we sell it. We don't pass it down to our gen next generation. We sell it because we want that money right now, that fast money. We don't say, okay, my father took this house a certain way, or he, or he uh, 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 took this business a certain, a certain level. What, what, we, what we said to ourselves, I don't want to be a shoemaker. I don't want to, I want to be a hip hop artist. I got a dream. I want to be. In movies. I want to, that's my. That's your dream, Dad. That's not my dream, right? And what they do in these movies, they actually demonize that. When the father is is telling the son, "Son, you, I want you to be the CEO of my corporation or something, or I want you to co continue to follow my legacy," but the son wants to be an artist or a rocker or whatever. Dad, that's you. That's not me. But what happens to that business? It crumbles. And then the, the son is 34 years old, still not a rock star. <laughs> still. But see, they demonize, they, they demonize those type of uh, uh, legacy or, 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 or looking down, or look down upon that. When the father is preparing and guiding the son to take over his family, his uh, empire, his, his uh, 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 dynasty. Dad, you know, I wanna, I'm different. I want to be different. I, want, I don't want to do that. Right? And, and, and it starts with, because in the beginning, the kid is watching his father. He's emulating his father. But eventually, when he becomes 18, 20, 21, 22, 23, what happens? He gets corrupted. He gets, you know, you know, you, you know uh, you, 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 and they start building movies about this and series. That I'm not you. Mom, I'm not you. And we watching that, like, yes, I can relate to that. Cause, <laughs> right? Old, listen, uh, Satan is a worthy adversary. Okay? So let's continue reading. He that maketh too much of his son shall bind up his wounds, and his bowels shall be with trouble to every cry. And horse not, and, and horse not broken become, becometh headstrong. And a child left to himself will be willful. Conquer the child, and he shall make thee afraid. Play Read that again. Conquer the child, and he shall make thee afraid. Come on. Play with him, and he will bring thee to heaviness. You see that? Let so it's, it's not always playing with your kids. And I, and I went through that for a long time. When I was you know, a young man, and, and I was trying to raise my son, and I had him you know, every weekend, two weeks a year, and you know, the, the, the old you know, child support thing, right? And when my son came to my house, it was playtime, right? But when I began to try to discipline him, he was like, wait, you're, you're the found parent. You're not. 
you know, and then I remember that I was so happy to see him. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted to go out and play, go play, you know, do this, do that. But when I began to discipline, it was like, oh, what? Mom does that. Not you. This is the fun house. You understand? So, so it, it's, it's, I even saw that he's thinking about looking into the scriptures that you have to discipline. And I'm not saying you, you should not play with your kids and you don't have a good time with your kids, but they have to always know that daddy is a little crazy. <laughs> don't cross dad because he will take it there. That's how they got to do it. Yeah, brother. No, it, it's, it's not necessarily... A com- we can't find a commandment, but what I'm saying is, is that you raise your child right. He's going to care. You, he, you're creating a clone. Mm-hmm. You understand? So, and, and what I'm trying to say is like this, and I, I see what you're saying is not, whether the commandment or not, is that this society promotes in, uh, uh, children individually, individualism. From their parents, and they is that disconnect of not understanding that okay, dad, you did it your way, but I'm gonna do it my way because I'm young, I'm hip, I'm cool, you old fashioned. You understand? And they keep portraying these movies and these TV shows like that, but it's supposed to be the opposite. The son and the daughter say, I wanna be like my parent, dad, thank you for teaching me everything, I wanna take your legacy and bring it forward. And that disconnect is, is, is promoted in the society. You understand? Now, yes, clearly it's difficult because many of us are coming out from the world. And then we may even have parents that they themselves are victim of their environment. And they don't have that understanding and things of that nature. That's why in the scripture says that, um, uh, that you should look towards the brethren as you know, look at every older man as your father and older old, old sister as your mother, you know, and, and, and brothers and sisters. We are a new family and things of that nature. So we're supposed to adopt ourselves. You understand? So if a brother in here knows of a sister that she is struggling with a child, with a single child, you're supposed to adopt that child spiritually. And sister, I'm going to help you out because I think this, you know, your child needs a father figure. So, you know, every, every so often I'm going to stop by, would that be okay with you? You understand? So that you have that uh, comfortability, they could call upon us. Billy's acting up. He's not doing his homework. He got caught cheating yesterday. He got playing hooky. You understand? So that's what I'm talking about. Among us, we're supposed to apply this. It's very difficult when we are trying to apply this with a house divided. But we're not divided. We're united. Con, so we apply these things among ourselves. Just hold your thoughts. We, we're almost done. I'm, I just hold your thoughts right now. And we, 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 I know there's a lot of questions, so, and I want to hear them. So, so let, let, let's continue reading. We're, gonna, we're almost done. Verse 10. Laugh not with him, lest thou have sorrow with him, lest thou snatch thy teeth in the end. Give him no liberty in his youth, and wink not at his follies. Do you know what it's talking about? You got to brainwash your kids from early. You got to indoctrinate them early. And see, even that is demonized. Mm-hmm. This family does not allow their children to watch television. And they have like, you know, scary music in the background. Dun, dun, dun. Today at Channel 5, an exclusive report of family. They demonize that. So you don't allow Billy to do birthdays? Dun, dun, dun. And they'll have the kid there, you know. Yeah, my mom and my dad. Hey, sweetie, so you, you want a birthday? You want to celebrate Christmas? Right? That's why you got to doctrinate your kids. But when, they, when, when that does happen, it's like, yeah, Christmas is wicked. It's against the command. Matter of fact, let me show you the scripture. You have the reporter running around. We, we got to go. We don't have a, not to watch here. You got to train him hard, quick. Okay. Let's keep reading. Bow down his neck while he is young and beat him in the sides while he is a child. Okay. <laughs> you got to. And, 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 and you know what's funny, though? We, we, we demonize this, right? We look at this kind of weird. But don't we do with that with puppies and dogs? We have dogs and pu- Come here. Where are you going? 
right? And the dog be doing flips and you got to train good. Working one leg, hopping, you know. But our kids, they, they just do whatever they want. You got to start them quick because they know. You, see, you, your kids have to, and this is always my advice, you always have to have a certain level of mystery with your kids. In other words, about you. You can't show all your hand to your kids. You know, that's why I told parents, don't ever argue in front of your kids. You should always co- come across a united front. It should be a certain image about your kids that she, they, they don't, you know, dad, I love him. He's cool, but I can't cross him. There's something about him. I know him. I don't know him that way. <laughs> but now we become, you know, and they promote that. Be your kid's friend. You know, be, be, be their buddy. All right, let's, let's just continue reading. Lest he wax stubborn and be disobedient unto thee, and so bring sorrow to thine heart. And, and I see that even, even, even in, 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 in common situations, like when we have, we have a body in certain areas, we need to you know, elect a deacon in that area to govern that body. And they may be, uh, they all came together around the same time. And then we feel that one of them is basically uh, worthy to lead that flock. But since everybody saw that brother when he was not yet refined and he was not yet being uh, in that position, now it's hard for the flock to say, oh, now you're going to lead us? I saw you, you know, I told you a scripture two, you know, two years ago. I remember when you was also answering questions. You understand? It's the same situation, but it's a difference when a new person comes in uh, that is, you know, that is uh, an elder from the get-go. He's a stranger. So there's a level of respect there. So the same thing applies with your kids. If your kids are your friend, they see you at your worst, they see you at your, at, at your best, they see you, you understand? So there's certain things you should not do in front of your kids because you want to always keep a certain level of mystery there. You hug him, you kiss him, you tell him when you're proud and all that, but a certain thing that when daddy walks in the room, you know, I should be at my best. If they don't, if daddy just, you know, uh, don't pause a little bit. Like, like when my daughter, when I get pissed when, 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 uh, when mom, you know, when her mom comes in or one of us come in and I want, I tell her, get up and address your parent. Mm. Don't be like in the, hi mom, how dad, stop what you're doing. Address your parents. Okay, because when I grew up, when your parents come in, right, or your grandma, what they say? Okay, stop what you're doing. You know, they'll say, bendy song, meaning bless me. You don't do that. You got to whack. So, so it, we have to start, you know, going back to some those, those, those old traditions. Uh, let's, keep, let's continue reading. Chastise thy son and hold him to labor, lest, he lewd be, lest his lewd behavior be an offense unto thee. Yeah, because you got to keep your kids working, doing something. Because if we don't do anything, that's when Satan comes in. They, they said statistically that the, the hours of, uh, of most people getting in trouble is between, uh, I think, three and like six. Because that's not what, it, you know, when they, when, you know we're not, they're not doing anything. When their kids are, are, are don't have, that's why it's, that, you know, these uh Statistically, they say these uh, after-school programs are very important because if the kids don't, they don't have nothing to do, they'll start getting trouble. To some degree, that's true. So you got to keep, keep them busy. Uh, let's keep reading. The let's, read, let's read the commentary. Society has led us to believe we are supposed to be our children's best friend, but this is a false and leads us to the lack of respect from the child. Too much joking with a child as a parent is a problem. Find chores for them to do to instill a good work ethic in them while they are young. Okay, so do you gotta do you gotta have a chart for your kids to do? Because what happened is is that, and this is a, a a thing too that if you do everything for your kids, wash the dishes, wash the clothes, watch this, everything, fold their coats, they're not gonna learn any discipline. You're becoming a maid. So they, they don't even know how to fold a pair of socks or another way. They don't even know how to, where, where, to, where to find it because everything's laid there for them. Right? So you got to learn. I remember the first one I lived by myself. Uh, my first laundry, 
I threw uh, the whites with the colors. <laughs> Remember that? And all my whites were like pink, yeah. red. I was like, what happened? <laughs> I, I, and I was, I was like 19, calling my mom, mom. Um, but my mom never showed me because she did my laundry for me. I'm a grown man. Now I got to learn how to do laundry. Okay, so you got you to gotta, you gotta teach him young. Let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 19. The book of 1 Timothy, chapter 6, verse 19. Laying up in the store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come, they that they may lay and hold on eternal life. O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science falsely so called, which come, which some professing have erred concerning the faith. Grace be with thee. I'm on. Continue to read the, the, the commentary. The commentary. Pay no attention to the, to, to, to the so-called child psychiatrist. If they try to tell you that a firm hand will hinder a child's creativity in life, these doctors will rather our children be out of control so they can put them on medication and make money counseling them. Exactly. So let's go to uh, Wisdom. Son of, uh, uh, Solomon's, uh, no, Salakia. Wisdom of Solomon. Wisdom of Solomon, that's it, Salakia. Got a necktie there, I mean, uh, tongue tie. 3, verse uh, 11. In the Apocrypha. Exactly, and they create these talking points. You know, discipline your kid and beating them. You're not going to let them, let them express themselves and be themselves. No, you can't be yourself. You're corrupt from the birth, Remember? You got that original sin. You got to correct them, right? Con. Con. The wisdom of Solomon, chapter 3, verse 11. For whoso despises wisdom and nurture, he is miserable, and their hope is vain. Their labor is unfruitful, and their works unprofitable. Their wives are foolish, and their children are wicked. Their offspring is cursed, where, wherefore blesses the barren that is undefiled which have not known the sinful bed, she shall have fruitful in the visitations of souls. So what they're saying is, is that, uh, and it, is, is it warm here now? Turn it okay, let's turn it uh, Let's turn it back off for like half hour, you know, balance it out. So what, what it's talking about, read, read 13 again. Their offsprings is cursed, wherefore blessed is the barren that is undefiled, which have not known the Because the word barren... Bed which is undefiled. And over here, the context is talking about someone that has never been exposed to wickedness. So, you know how they'll say, you know, your kids, um, they're going to grow up sometime. You got to expose them to this. and Don't be scared about that. They, they got to learn it somehow. They got to grow up sometime and things of that nature. And then you, you they, they're, these things are set up to give you the impression that protecting your kids from certain behaviors and certain television shows and certain things is actually bad. They're going to grow up somehow. You know, so it, it's, 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 it's a blessed be the one that, that read that again. The, all, the offsprings is cursed, wherefore blessed is the barren that is undefiled, uh -huh. which have not known the sinful bed. That, that she, has known, have, have not known the sinful bed. Read. She, ha, she shall have fruit in the visitations of souls. Okay, let's read the commentary. Understanding that child discipline is wisdom from the Most High is important. If you disregard this knowledge that, ex, that, that expect your house to be filled with wickedness, wickedness, it is better not to have the children at all, it's better not to have children at all to have 10 and all of them be cancer to a society. Our people have children, but because they didn't want to want them or start to feel like they can live their former lives, they don't care what the child does sometimes. So, mommy and daddy, we'll be right back. Uh, so and so is going to take care of you, and they go into the nightclub. Yeah. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, 
after hours Thursday, uh, hip hop fr Friday, you know, Saturday uh, after work party, Sunday brunch party, right? And who's taking care of the system? Somebody else. Because, and they, and they create, and this society create this whole concept of, of single life. That when you have a child, you're missing out. I'm missing out my life. I'm me. I want to, you know, and, 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 and it, that spirit gets so strong that you even hear mothers just killing their kids. Because they just miss the after, you know, the life they used to have. You understand? Let's get. Hebrews 12 and 5. One, two, one, two. Okay. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 5. And we're almost done. Okay. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 5. Con? Con? Con, okay. The book of Hebrews chapter 12, verse 5. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as the children... My son, despise not thou the chastening of, thy, of the Lord. And this goes back to the deacon where he was talking about the works when the Most High is chastising you. This, read that again. And ye have forgotten the exhortations which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord. Okay, nor faint with, when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Most High loveth, he shall chasten him. It and says, uh, nor faint when thou art rebuke of him, meaning don't get, don't get all this, you know, don't pass out. <laughs> Man up, woman up. Because the most high chastised those that he loved. Read, read six. Verse six. For whom the most high loveth, he chasteneth, him, and scourged every son whom he receiveth. Verse seven. If he endure chastening, a higher dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? Right, verb eight. But if ye be without chastisement, chastisement, whereof all all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. So you don't want to be a bastard, do you? So when you get, and, and, and basically a, a, a bastard is 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 a is a child that their father, their parents has disowned them. So the mo so so you don't want the most side to say you're not my son. You're not my daughter. You don't want that to, to the, you know, that, that voice or, 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 or the power to say that. No longer deal with that guy. I'm done with him. He's no longer my son. He, she's no longer my daughter, right? Let's read the commentary. The commentary. The Most High put us through punishment to put us in order. If he didn't love us then, he would have just reserved us to judgment like the rest. Chastisement can teach us to change our ways. Let's go to Colossians 3 and 18 to 21. The book of Colossians chapter 3, verse 18. Wives, submit yourself unto your own husbands as it fits in the most high. Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing unto the Most High. Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. Okay, read the commentary. Children must be taught to obey and submit themselves to their parents. This is the step that is not taught today in the modern society. There is, not, there is no healthy fear in the house of the parents anymore. Also, it is important not to be a parent who looks to antagonize or belittle their child either. So... That's what's very important when I say parents should never argue in front of their kids because how is it you as a mother want respect to your, from your children and you're not showing respect to your husband? But mom, doesn't the Bible say wives submit to your husband? Right? So that's why when you go into when your child sees you is that united front. If they're in your presence, anything else could wait. Fake it. <laughs> you understand? When they leave the room, then you got to deal with whatever. You know, until you master that you're not faking it. 
you know, I'm not saying that it's okay to argue behind your kids. But if you're, if you're, if you're going to have an issue, okay, uh, uh, don't do it in front of their, 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 their presence. But, but you should achieve the perfection that you're not arguing at all because you're under one, one understanding, one flesh, right? Okay. So let's go to Exodus chapter 20, verse 12. And we all know this. Mm-hmm. Honor thou father and thou mother that the, thou days may be long upon the land which the Lord thou power has given thee. Okay? So let, let's go into the commentary. Commentary. One reason we are still under a curse is because we often do not obey this law. If we don't know how to honor our earthly parents who we can see, we definitely will not honor the father who we cannot see. This is law which must be emphasized with the next generation and after. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Ephesians 6 and 1 through 4 in the the, uh, New Testament. The book of Ephesians chapter 6 verse 1. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and thy mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. And ye, fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the, nur- in the nurture and admonition of the Most High. Right. So being a leader is not always pumping your chest. Sometimes you got to be a disciplinary. Sometimes you have to be a counselor. Sometimes you got to be an ear to just, just to hear your child, what, what they're going through. You understand? You, it, it's, you have to put multiple hats as a leader. You have to inspire your kids through, through action. So like you. Oop. I thought I was muting my phone. Okay. So let's, let, let's read the commentary. The commentary. Paul was letting us know on a higher level that the same honor and respect applies to the members in the church and those over them. This sometimes comes with chastisement as well as if we do not follow the order. So this is, that's why it, it, it's, it's, we have to start getting used to and expect accountability and punishment when we do something wrong, even as adults in a body. Okay, like for instance, when we have a situation that, you know, we, we have covered this before that we, let's just say we're in a situation that we have to excommunicate a member, right? And then, you know, the, 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 the law of how we, 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 we break it down in regards of grace, let's say, okay, it may be a situation we may, they may be excommunicated until the, t- the day of atonement next year. Let's just say that's the ruling. We have to get used to that. You understand? We have to make it, you know, uh, uh, because we are very okay in following the laws of man. You know, I got to go pay this ticket. I got to go do this. I got to show up at work at time because I'll get fired. But we, have, we get very funny when we as a body implement laws as, 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 uh, within, uh, within the body, within the leadership. What scripture is that? Elder? I, don't, I don't follow man. I follow Jesus. I Right? That spirit, because we got to get used to understanding that, and that's why, you know, within the, 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 the saints and the, 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 uh, the, uh, the commentary that we read before the baptism is, is that any decree that, that, that is, is forward that either is implemented by the elders or by us, if we make a vote and we just say, okay, we're going to do this on Tuesday, we're going to do that, right? You have to follow that through. Let your nay be nay, your yea be yea. Everything else is what? Wickedness. So we have to be understand. We have to, people have to see orderly among us. Because, you know, I always hear love, 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 which is important. But the love has to be implemented within an orderly uh, world. Meaning, it is very easy if we all having a feast, we all loving each other. We, everybody's giving hugs and kisses and I love you, man. Right? That's very easy to display that love. That love has to be displayed when there is no feast. When there is probably chastisement. When there is correction. 
when we're working together and we're getting each other's nerves. Now that's when, you, you know, you, you, it's, it's tougher to love your, uh, uh, you know, your brother. So we have to show that love in a, go, uh, a, a, a government structure. And every day, not only in the feast days. You understand? And once we implement that, once we master that, that's when we, we begin to become uh, perfect. So let's read the commentary. Uh, Salakim, let's go to Romans. We read the commentary. Let's go to Romans 13 and 1. In this scripture, it, it, you know, the, the world or the Christian world teaches as this is talking about obeying the powers that be like the government. This is not talking about the government of the world, but this is talking about the government or the powers that be within the body of Christ. So the, the, and it's going to prove itself right in the writings. Just hold your, uh, hold, hold your thoughts. Romans chapter 13, verse 1. The book of Romans chapter 13, verse 1. Let every soul be subject unto the highest power, to the higher powers. To the higher power, meaning within the body, meaning within the leadership. Not the, it's going to show you, this is not talking about subjecting yourself by, uh, to the Roman Empire. Because that was the power that was in charge at that time. This is Paul talking to the, the body of Christ saying, you must subject yourself to the elders that were set by the church. It's going to show you that. Let's read it. But there is no power but of a higher. Come on. The powers that be are ordained of a higher. Ordained by who? A higher. Come on. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power resisteth the ordinance of a higher. Come on. And they that resisteth shall receive to themselves damnation. Come on. For the rulers are not at a terror to good works. It rulers are terror, uh, not a terror. Now, it, 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 is that the case with the United States of America or Rome? Nah. Right? See, that's goes to show that wasn't talking about. Rome. It was talking about the, the, the elders within the, the, the body of Christ. Let's keep reading. It's going to prove that. For rulers are not a, t not a terror for, of, to good works, but to evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Come on. Through that which is good? Come on. And thou shalt have praise at, of the same. For he is the minister of the Most High. Read that again. For he is the minister of the Most High. Now he is talking about the rulers, right? Showing you this is not talking about Caesar. Augustus, whoever was ruling at that time. This was talking about the deacon that was sent forth. So Paul was sending letters to the churches that whoever we send forth as deacons and rulers, obey them. Respect them. Protect the, you know, respect the position. And I have told many times within, within, within uh, uh, the body when I have meetings within different parts of the United States, is that, listen, you may not respect the deacon, but respect the position. Because he would put that, even if he's not even ready 100%. Because sometimes this church is growing so abundantly that the labors are few. That now we have to actually send deacons to different areas, where even this church, because we, we, to help other deacons. Protect the position, respect the position, rather. Keep reading. Keep, keep, read that again. For he is the minister of the Most High. For he is the minister. So if a brother is in that position, do you know he is a minister of the Most High? Through all his flaws, right? He is still a minister of the Most High. You have to respect that position, right? Let's read. To thee for good. Come on. But if thou do that which is evil, come on. Be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in the vein. Come on. For he is a minister of a higher. He is the minister of the Most High. Come on. And revenge to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. And this is also talking about that. The ultimate judge is Christ. So the ministers are there to, to, to make sure that they are protecting you from the wrath that is coming from Christ. Because when Christ comes back, he's coming back with a new name. He's not coming with Savior. He did that already. He's coming with a new name. He's coming to judge. And the scripture says, and I saw him in a white horse. And with righteousness, he does judge and make war. So the minister is there to protect you of that judgment, of that sword that's coming from Christ. Right? Let's read. Wherefore, you must needs be subject, not only for wrath, but also for the conscience sake. Come on. Okay, so hold that. Let's read the commentary. Commentary. So order, so order doesn't just stop at our houses. 
is also translate into how we function with the Most High and those he sent to help us. Okay, let everything be done in decent and in order. And that's something with, with Israel, that's a problem. Because everybody has an opinion. Okay, uh, let's read, let's go to Job 36 and 7. Job 36 and 7. The book of Job, chapter 36, verse 7. He withdraw not his eyes from the righteousness, but with kings are they on the throne. Yea, he doth establish them for every, forever, and they are exalted. And if they be bound in fetters and beholden in course of affliction, then he showeth him them their work and their transgressions that they have exceeded. He opened also their ear to discipline and commanded that they return from iniquity. If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their, and their years in pleasure. But if, they not, but if they obey not, they shall perish by the sword and shall die without knowledge. But the hypocrites in the heart heap, in, in, the hypocrites in heart heap up wrath. They, cr they cry not when he bindeth them. They die, in you, they die in youth, and there is life in among the unclean. Okay, let's read the commentary. Commentary. The Father reveals our errors to us much like we should do the same for our children. If we hear his correction and correct our ways, he will comfort us. If we rebel and obey not, he will bring the wrath. We must understand if the Father cares for us and follows such steps to thee retain the righteousness, we must also. Okay, let's go to Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 1, in the Apocrypha. When everyone's there, say con. The Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 1. Love righteousness, ye that be judges of the earth. What does that mean? Love righteousness, ye that be judges of the earth. Who he's talking to? Israel. Because we are the judges. We were the one that were ordained to, 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 to be the, the ambassadors of the Most High. The example. We're supposed to be the people that... When all nations would say, come, let us go into the house of Jacob, for he would teach it of his ways. And the law would come out of what? Zion. Mm. So we're supposed to love righteousness. The, ye, they are judges of the earth, right? Read. Think of the most high with good and the simplicity of the heart of heart seek him. For he will be found them that tempt him not and show himself unto such as do not distrust him. Forward thoughts separate from a higher and his power. When he is tried, reprove the unwise. For in the malicious soul, wisdom shall not enter, nor dwell in the body that is subject unto sin. But the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit and remove from the thoughts that are without understanding and will not abide when unrighteousness cometh in. Okay, so let's read the commentary. The commentary. The Holy Spirit leaves when we function and think with, without righteousness. This is tough love as it does not allow excuses. We must not give room to sinful behavior when our children as will cause them to become high-minded and proud of against the Father's laws. Okay, so hold that. Let's just, just jump down to, let's read the next commentary. Let's just, just uh, skip to Rock 4. Okay. And then come, jump down to the commentary. And then uh, let's go to First Timothy 5 and 8. But let's read the commentary first. So with chastisement, the Holy Spirit teaches us wisdom so that we may be honorable. If we still refuse, she will forsake us. We then have no discernment of right and wrong as we now have reprobate minds. And that's why it was talks about that children and women will lay uh, with us and, and with the understanding that, you know, sisters, their wisdom, right? They're the feminine aspect, right? Con. The, the, the way they could function best is when they're in a calm, secured environment. That's when their wisdom flourish, right? When they're in an ecstatic and, and aggressive and, and, and dangerous environment, their wisdom leaves them because that's not their energy. 
You understand? Our job as men is to be that pillar, right? So they could feel safe and comfortable. But if we are being led by women in a very dangerous scenario, right? Women and children will be led by women and children. How is that wisdom? Because now the women are going to be ecstatic all over the place. Because that's the women's vibration. They're emotional. They cannot be in a very stressful situation. That they, they don't thrive in that environment. Okay? They have been for many years because they had to. They had no choice. You understand? But they're not supposed to be in that environment. They're supposed to be in an environment when they walk in the nation that the men make them feel secure. Make them feel like these men got it. They, 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 what is, and, and, and all they got, their thing is like, what can I help? Because these men got order, structure, pillars in our community. Right? And that's when you see the Holy Spirit bringing forth. But if men are not being that pillar, and they're like, what you going to do? I don't know. Well, what you going to do? That's why it says that kids, children, and women will lead men. We have to be that pillar, okay? That's why even when, when, when I always learned this early, very early on, it's like even if you, 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 you're in a situation that you don't know what somebody's talking about or something, or you, you, you never show anybody that you're shook, even when you're shook. You know, and I learned that when I was doing my MMA there. When you get hit with a good, good, a good hit, just... Do that. You're like, mm. it's gonna hit me with a shot. Right, smile. Right? Give him a thumbs up. Good shot. You know like uh, don't ever don't ever get panicking, right? Because when you panic, that's when they smell you. <laughs> and that's where it's been. That's how it's been, right? So let's keep let's read uh first Timothy five and eight. First Timothy chapter first Timothy chapter one. Sorry, 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 8. That's it. But if any provide not his own for his own, and specifically for those of his own house, he have denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. See that? So you got to provide for your house. And that is in every aspect. Your physical house, this house, okay, which is the house of Christ, it's talking about all, it's universal. Okay, you have to provide for your house. If you don't do that, you're worse than an infidel. Let's continue. Let's go to read the commentary. The and we're commentary. almost done. To not, to not make sure your children are disciplined is a serious spiritual error, and it's worth than being a non-believer. We must take serious all aspects of our walk and faith as we are to be counted even more responsible for our actions on Judgment Day. To whom much, to whom much is given, much is required. Let's make sure our children get our attention and we do right by them as they will lead our nation after us. Shalom. Shalom. Let's give the most high a hand. So, we got a lot of work to do. We have a lot of work to do. So, I so want to give an old praise to the most high by the, the, uh, the elders bringing down these lessons. They, they, they're always profound. I know I saw a lot some hands up in doing the lesson. Any questions in regard to the lesson? Yes, sister. Deacon, I'm off. Yes. 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 Okay, and you asking that question because in general, no, no. I mean, yeah. If you, if your child has a talent, um. Uh, um, you should embrace it. Shh, folks, folks. 
Right, right. I see. I should good, good point. Let's say for sake of argument, yes, uh, we're not saying that you, if your kids have dreams and, and aberrations, things of that nature, that you should not not only encourage that, but uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, nurture that. But it's also the kid's responsibility to understand that whatever they're doing or whatever talent they have is not for themselves. It's for the embedment of their family, first and foremost, and then their nation. You understand? So what happened in society is, is that too many kids are more focused on their individual, or too many people are focused on their individual happiness right now, right here, at this point, rather than their responsibility of their family legacy. And one of the things that the nation are very successful at that they sacrifice for their family legacy. We don't do that. You understand? So, and, and, and so I hope to answer your question that it's, it's not a, 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 as simple as being, ma being good at one thing and I'm not good at that and, or, and things of that nature. You got to do what I'm doing. So I'm, I'm a teacher. You got to be a teacher. I'm a cop. You got to be. And not necessarily in that particular situation, but the child, um, uh, you should stir your kids that your child should be proud of their name, of their family, okay, and bring their forth their family forward. So, but if the child don't see anything they should be proud of, it's not going to give them any incentive to sacrifice for their family. They're going to think about like, I, like I'm done with my mother, and my father. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do for self. I'm out of here, dad. I'm out of here, mom. Because all they see is arguing, all they see is bickering. They don't see a family working together to better whatever they're doing. You understand? So, so I hope that answers your question. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Exactly, exactly, exactly. It's, it's, and, and, and even as Hebrew Israelite, whatever it is that you do, how can I bring that talent to help the nation? God. That should be your mindset. Because right now, our individual family are not united. Everybody is all over the place. Because the Most High told us that he's going to pick us out one or two out of every city. So with those one or two that's coming out of every city, now we become the family. So now we have to come together and, and, and create different programs to better our family and things that nature. So, so, so I hope, yeah, I hope it answers your question. Any other question? Thank you, thank you, sister. Great question. Yes, brother. <laughs> Pull off or on? Oh, okay, yeah, it's, it's, it's getting kind of nippy. I think the sun is down, so I think we, we should be good. Great question, brother. Oh, great comment. Great comment. All right. Any other question? Okay. Yes, sister. Okay. Yes. That is profound, sister. That is profound. I'm going to tell you why. My wife is like the biggest nag in her school, my daughter's school. She knows every teacher's name. Every teacher has her cell phone. They have my cell phone. Sometimes they call me, Mr. Rodriguez, are you got my cell phone? <laughs> uh, we just want to let you know because your wife came last week and she said this. And it, that, that is very profound because if they don't think you're, you, you know, uh, you are not involved in their kid's life. Uh, they're right. They don't care. 
And when they feel that you, you are involved in the kid's life, they actually call you when there's different programs, different uh, scholarship. Mm -hmm. Ms. Rodriguez, we were thinking about your daughter to do this. And, we, you know, because some, some parents, they just want to drop their kids and make sure that there isn't any after school program uh, because they could stay, they could come home at six rather than three. You know, they're not, they're, because, you know, they're, they're focusing on their own personal happiness. So that's profound with the sister, you know, absolutely, she said. Any other question or comment? Okay, no, no. Okay, any uh, for the first timers? Anybody here for the first time? 